So ladies, gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, dear friends, and everyone around the globe. I take pleasure this morning, as, you, as some of you have been coming in, we've been managing uh, the situation, but not having a dull moment even for a second. And in the same spirit of Toastmasters, we, I present to you someone who works with those who dread public speaking as much as the dreaded coronavirus. Ooh, ooh, ooh. She helps her clients turn fear into delight and pride. I'm very curious to learn that. Toastmasters has been her inspiration and testing ground for her to work, for her work for over three decades. Wow. Recently, she has enjoyed zooming around Toastmasters globe. She is also passionate about acting, comedy, improv, where she has been a founding member with various organizations. So without further ado, let me introduce to you, Aline Andrew. Aline, welcome, welcome. Can't wait to hear all the nuggets of wisdom and guidance and things you have for us. The stage is yours. Could you please spotlight Aline? Thank you so much, Pallavi. And thank you, fellow Tastemasters and guests, for joining me today. Um, what are we going to talk about? Well, when things go wrong, when you feel frustrated, angry, what are your choices? Well, one very clear choice is what you've been doing with Balavi. Breathing, relaxing, definitely much better than losing your temper. Another choice you have is using some humour. Can I just see uh, with a show of hands, who here uses humour in a challenging moment? Can I just see who, who does that? Yes, absolutely, great. And, you know, how do we feel when we use humour? I was on the deck because we're on a cruise right we are on a cruise is that right yeah. yeah I was on the deck just a while ago and who do you think I met on the deck you know it's a virtual cruise things are a bit sort of like an altered reality so the person I met on the deck was from an altered reality I met none other than Father Christmas himself on the deck. We ordered our cocktails and then he taught me something important in life. He taught me to go ho, ho, ho. I'd like to share that with you. Can you put your cameras on for me, please? Would you? Cameras. So I can share the wisdom I learned from Father Christmas. Thank you. I can see some real faces. Lovely. Good morning. Great. So could I ask you to do that? Ho, ho, with me. Take a nice belly breath and let's all together uh, unmute yourselves, please. Do unmute yourselves. Lovely. Ho, ho, ho. Oh. Great, absolutely lovely. You can become Santa's helper in a few months. Now, at the same time, please put your hands on your belly. Now, I know some of us may not have bellies. We might have six packs, but somewhere under those six packs, there must be a belly. Could you put your hands on your belly? And again, go ho, ho, ho. Ho, 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 ho. Wonderful. What happened to your hands that were on your belly? And anybody out there who would like to share that? Elizabeth, I can't hear you, sorry. <laughs> uh, they go in and out, yeah. They go in and out. So what happens when the belly goes in and out? What really is happening? Your diaphragm is working. Your diaphragm is working. Emotions are being released. And as the diaphragm works, 
we breathe properly. Because one of the huge challenges we face in our stressful world is that we're not breathing properly as Bala the exercise showed us that sometimes in stressful times we don't breathe properly and therefore we do not take in the oxygen that is so important for our brains to work for clear thinking for focus that doesn't work and the toxic carbon dioxide just stays within the body and that is a toxin that has been linked carbon dioxide has been linked to many serious diseases it's the weekend i don't want to list the serious diseases but i think you get the gist so the ability to breathe is very important for clarity of mind and problem solving in difficult situations in creativity and breathing is also important because it releases the carbon dioxide which if it remains in the body is a huge health problem. So if we can go ha, 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 we are quite automatically, by default, doing something very healthy, both for our mind and for our body. So apart from acting like Santa Claus, what other activity gets us to do ha, ha, ha? Laughing, humour wit so laughing matters especially in difficult moments and sometimes people say but that is so flippant making fun of a difficult situation is flippant not necessarily sometimes it's the best thing you can do to see another perspective a lighter note because as you laugh solutions come in a different response to the stress response comes in. So how are we together today going to create some humour? Okay, you probably now want to be laughing at me as I attempt to draw up my slides because I'm no techie. But bear with me, laugh as I endeavour to share my slides. And let's see where that takes us. Okay, here we are, laughing matters. So we've covered that one, we did our Santa bit, and we talked about how important it is for health, for the health of our heart. Remember, the heart does not like stress and the hormones related to stress. It also helps our creativity because as we absorb the oxygen, in in the right quantities then we get more creative the brain can function the brain needs oxygen to function most of the oxygen we take in feeds the brain so we need to breathe we need to see the humorous notes we need to have a bit of wit to be creative and also, it's not just about health, it is about relationships. How do you feel when you laugh with somebody else? Laughter, as Victor Borg said, is the shortest distance between two people. And that's why laughter is an important element of Toastmasters as we bond. And that's why laughter and humor could be an important way of connecting to people at work. And yet, some people don't laugh, don't smile at work. They feel very grim. When you go back to work on Monday, can you introduce a lighter note? Let's see. Where does all this laughter start from? Well, as Charlie's Chaplin says, to truly laugh, you must be able to play with your pain. Do we have pain? Are there things that frustrate us, annoy us? 
maybe? Could we possibly play with them? Maybe you want to call it pain. Maybe you want to call it challenge. Whatever you want to call it, it's about those difficult moments. Can we really take those and play with them? Maybe we can. Certainly Charlie Chaplin, he took some of the most painful moments in his life and played with them. The tramp character he created, that was straight from his experiences in the World War and before the poverty that he lived with. The extreme mental illness that his mother had and he as a young child had to live with that. From his pain, he was able to make millions around the world laugh. And even in Europe's and the world's greatest painful moment, he was still able with the film, The Great Dictator, to turn pain into humor and through that humor deliver wisdom. Can we use humor to open people's minds, to deliver a different perspective? Well, let's see how we can do that. Can we remember ear tapes? That's the magic word for developing humor, ear tapes. We've probably never seen ear tapes, but just imagine what that girl has on her ears. And remember the word ear tapes. What does ear tape stand for? How's that gonna help us with humor? Well, the E stands for emotion. Humor needs emotion. There has to be an emotional connection to what you're saying. A, acting things out may make it funny. Like Robin Williams, he had this little joke about, I wonder if a chair says, oh no, I don't want that asshole on me. So he acted out his jokes. Ah, oh, reality. Rarely stories about green Martians landing in your study one day will be funny. Most humor, most wit that really connects starts from real situations that people can relate to. A lot of humor has a target Sometimes, sadly, we target religions, races, political parties, hair color like blonde jokes. Those are cheap jokes. Let's move away from that kind of humor and let's target maybe ourselves. The best humor is the one targeted at yourself where you're making fun of yourself or about problems, let's target problems. I saw phenomenal stand-up comedy on depression. And I could relate to that because I tend to feel low on some days. And I could relate to the comedian who was targeting depression and making fun of depression. So a joke, a bit of humor, a humorous story needs to have a target. What is it you're getting at? An analogy. Well, you know, when the coronavirus started, how many people were joking that it's a bit like the corona beer, ha, ha, ha. Or a play on words. So a pun. Like the, the coronavirus being like the beer, that could be an analogy, or it could be a play on words, it says in this joke, you know what goes great with coronavirus? Well, Lyme disease. How many of you have heard that one? Yeah. An exaggeration. Humor is about taking a real situation and making it bigger so it becomes funny. And lastly, surprise, an element of surprise, that's the punchline usually. So ear tapes, E-A-R-T-A-P-E-S. 
it's like if I could just stop sharing my screen. Right, so can I have your mics on, please? What does ear tape stand for? What is the E? Emotion. Thank you. The A. Acting. Acting, you could act it out. Thank you. The T. Target. Absolutely. What are you getting at? So that's ear. The tape. Right. Sorry, I missed the R. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm having a problem with my spellings. I do apologize. What does the R stand for? Reality. Absolutely. Make it about something that people can relate to that's absolutely real. So we've done the ear. Now we're moving to the tapes. We've done the T. Let's move on to the A, the second A. What is the second A? Analogy. An analogy. The P? Play on words. Play on words, absolutely. The E? Exaggeration. Exaggeration. And the S is your element of? Surprise. Surprise. Okay, right. Are you ready to work on this now? Are you ready to work on this now? Yes. yes. Thank you. Right. Could you, I'll give you one minute to think about three things that annoy you, three things that you would say are a pain to you, frustration. Quiet time for you to note three things, please. Okay, so you've got three things. And um, we're going to go into a breakout room for three minutes. What I'd like you to do is to take one of those items that you've noted and spend a minute with the other person telling them what it is that bugs you about this thing. Um, obviously, you may need to change maybe names or you may need to sort of choose um, something that you feel comfortable talking about. Do that and please tell them what bugs you because from that pain, as we link to that pain, that frustration, we will come back and create some humor using ear tapes. So can we go off into our breakout rooms and be back in three minutes? Are there any questions before we do that? No, all right. See you in a bit then. Three. Well, welcome back. If I can just share my slides. Um, so basically we've done the bit about emotion, getting in touch with the emotion. So you chose your topic and you really got in touch with that emotion of frustration or whatever it was. Now, as Julie, Judy Carter says, who's an amazing comedian, she says, dig deep into that frustration, into that emotion, write some E statements, which, which are what? The scary thing about, so like for me, it's depression. I'd, I'd start off my sentences. This is my preparation work, by the way. It's not the way I'm gonna deliver the joke, but the scary thing about depression is, the scary thing about depression is, so basically I'd give myself some time, a piece of paper, a pen, and I would just create lots of sentences that start off with the scary thing about, you know, the annoying thing is. I do the same exercise with the weird thing about is. And then again, the stupid thing about, you know, the, the, the topic is and the hard thing. So really you're doing a, a brainstorm exercise, if you like, with yourself. Or you may do it with a comedy buddy, or you may talk it through with yourself, whatever works with you, but do really go into this deeper level because it will release so many things that you were not that aware of that can be hilarious. I wish we had the time, I'd give you the opportunity to actually work through this, but we don't have the time. And once you've done that, that's the time when you finish doing step two, then you apply your ear tapes. Because you have such a wealth, you generated such a wealth in, uh, you know, in, in the second stage, you then can act out some of those sentences. You then can find puns linked to those 
words you've used in the sentences. You will find surprises. You will find exaggerations. So from step two, apply ear tapes on it and, and you will find a wealth of humorous things to say, to create your humorous speech, to create your joke. And I wish, I really wish I had more time. We'd have so much fun doing this, but I guess the time is up. Is that right? So thank you so much. And let's share laughter. It's the best way to stay healthy, creative, and connected. Thank you from me. Well, Elaine, thank you, you so much. Thank please you. stop your screen share. Thank you so much, Aileen, for the insight of ear tapes, but really using grief and depression and a dark moments to create humor in life. We have some questions for you in the chat, especially about the ear tape. We will send them to you later, so our audience have the answers. But thank you very much. Much needed humor.